目标就往上爬。你相信你可以勇敢的往前冲吧。有想法。Hi, good morning, everyone! Wow, you guys are so early. Good morning to you. Yes, I know you have just joined us. You have just joined us in our secrets reveal techniques to solve tax audit issues. Yeah. Now we're gonna start in just a few more minutes. We're gonna start at eleven o'clock morning. Yeah. We're gonna start at eleven o'clock sharp. Yeah. So if you are early, if you are early, thank you so much for joining so early. Right. But stay tuned. Don't go anyway because we are going to start at eleven. Sharp later, and I am going to reveal my next secret. My next secret on techniques to solve tax audit issue. Today we're gonna discuss on another issue, and today's issue is about purchases. Yes, purchases. Have you ever wondered that actually purchase could be an issue when the Inland Revenue Board comes to audit? And how do we solve this? I will reveal my secrets to you later. So at the same time, in the meantime, yeah, do one thing because you are so early today. Help me to share today's Facebook Live with your friends, family, business partners, business associates. You know why? Because all of us would like to learn how to solve tax audit issues, and I'm going to share with you my secret, yeah, secret that has never been told, never been shared, yeah. And these are real life secrets, right? Real, real life techniques, yeah. So share this out by just clicking the share button. Click the share button below, right? You will see it. Whether you are seeing this from a computer or seeing this from a phone, click the share button. Share this with your friends. Family, um, business partners, business associates, yeah. So you don't want your friends to miss this technique because this is going to be very, very useful when it comes to tax audit. It could save you a lot of tax and penalty, yeah. So we're gonna start at eleven o'clock again. Let me remind you, right? Eleven o'clock, we start sharp. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. And please share this Facebook live out right now, yeah. If you have any friends whom you think you want them to learn this together with you. Put their name, tag their name into the comment box right now, so that we can learn together. I'll see you at eleven o'clock sharp. Yeah, I'll see you then.
Hi, good morning, everyone. Very morning to all of you. Wow, you guys are so early. You know what? In just five more minutes, five more minutes, and we are going to start our Facebook Live today, of which I will be revealing my secrets to you. Yes, today we're going to talk about techniques to solve tax audit issue. And today I am going to review another secret, another issue on how have we actually helped our client to solve the tax audit issue? And today we're going to discuss about purchases. Yes, you know what? We're going to start in just a few more minutes. And you know what? Do one thing for me. Do one thing for me because this series, this Secrets Review series, I am going to share all my secrets which have never been told before. Yeah. So help me do one thing by sharing out, sharing out today's Facebook Live with your friends family, business partners, business associates. Let all of your friends to also learn together with you by just clicking the share button below. While well, you will see the share button at the bottom, whether you're seeing it from a computer or you're seeing this from a phone, you will see the share button. Click the share button so that you can share today's Facebook Live with them. Or if you have anyone in your mind that you want them to learn this together with you, Tag their name right away. Tag their name into the comment box so that they will come in and they will learn this secret together with you. Yeah. And yeah, I see someone has already said good morning to me. Let me just uh, yeah say good morning to all of you. Hi, Richard. Richard, good morning to you. Kim Kim, good morning. Yeah, Lee Chai Yuan. Hi, hi, Lee Chai Yuan. And Elaine Tan, good morning to all of you. Well, remember, share this out because today I'm going to share my secret yo, on how to solve tax audit issue. Yeah, These secrets have never been shared before and this is the time where you want to learn how to solve your tax audit issues because this will potentially help you to save a lot of tax when it comes to tax audit by the Inland Revenue Board. Yeah, So I'm going to start this in just a couple of minutes at 11 o'clock sharp. So take this time to share this out with your friends, right? Click the share button right now and I will see you at 11 o'clock, right? See you then. Welcome everyone. Very good morning to all of you. Yes, it's already 11 a.m., 11 o'clock. And as promised, I will start my Facebook Live today on Secrets Review. 
techniques to solve tax audit issues. Yes, in this Secrets Reveal series, I am going to share with you different techniques to solve different tax audit issues. And these are all based on real life case. Yeah. Real life case of which the Inland Revenue Board comes to check on uh, some um, accounts of our clients and how did we help our client to solve the tax audit issue. And yes, today is the second episode. Yeah, we have already got our first episode and the response was really good. This is our second episode. Wow, I see a lot of people are already here, right? Let's let me say good morning to all of you again. Yes, I see like one. Hi, good morning, like one. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, thanks for sharing the Facebook Live. Hi, Chuyen. Good morning to you. And Cheryl, Cheryl Tan, good morning to you. Yeah. Now, before I really start, let me just remind you again. Yeah, today we're gonna talk about this issue called purchases. Purchases. Yeah. Have you ever wondered that purchases could actually be disallowed? an issue when the Inland Revenue Board comes and check on your account and it could actually cause you pay more tax, more penalty. Do you want to know what are the techniques that we have used to solve this tax audit issue? Yeah, if you want to know this, if you want to find out more, remember, stay tuned right now. And of course, at the same time, please help me to share this Facebook Live. We are going to start right now already. So take this last opportunity to share this Facebook Live out with your friends, family, business partners, business associates, by just clicking the share button, share button below. You see it whenever, whether you're seeing it from a computer or you're viewing it from your phone. Click the share button yeah, so that they will learn this together with you. Or if you have any friends whom you think you want them to learn, type the name right now. Just put the name in, type the name in the comment box so that they will come in right now. All right. So, yes. Also, good morning to Betty. Hi, Betty. Good morning. And me, good morning. Good morning to you. Okay. Now, I know there are probably some of you who actually come in for the very first time, see me for the very first time, yeah? So let me just briefly introduce who I am. Let me just briefly introduce to you who I am, right? Of course, now, today we're going to talk about Secrets Revealed, and my name is Zen Chow, right? Zen Chow, I'm the, people call me the tax guru, yeah, the tax guru of YYC. But the fact is that I'm actually the tax director, I'm the head of tax department for YYC Group, yeah? I'm also the tax director, yeah? So you probably have not heard of YYC, right? so maybe I can just do a very simple introduction, yeah, on who YYC is. Now, before but before that, you know what? Every time I do um, a Facebook Live, I would like my session to be more very interactive because I don't want to just speak alone in front of the camera, in front of the computer. And, you know, it's going to be really boring if I don't get a response from you all. Yeah? So, I just ask a very simple question. How many of you here actually join us for the very first time? If you're joining us for the very first time, can you please put one? Put one into the comment box, right? Just type one into the comment box so that I know this is the first time you join our Secrets Revealed series, right? Our Secrets Revealed Facebook Live. Of course, if you have joined our last session, the previous session, which is also available on our Facebook page here, you can go to our Facebook page to have a look at the previous session that we have done. But if this is your second time, you can just put two. If this is the second time that you're joining us, you can put two. Now, so who is joining us for the very first time? You can just put one over there. Wow, I see Shirley has responded to me. Hi, Shirley. Thanks for joining us for the very first time. Don't worry if you have missed the previous session. Yeah, The recorded session is available in our, on our Facebook page. Yeah? Just go to my Facebook page, Ask Guru Zen Chow. You see it over there yeah? and can view that. Right? Well, we have a lot of first-timer. Chiu Yen, Richard Gan, Victor Ui, Basil Lourdes, uh, Chua Tiong Jit, Suk Wan. Uh, I have... Oh, Richard Lyon is the second time. Hi, Richard. Thanks for joining us again. Cheryl is the first-timer as well. Wow, looks like a lot of first-timers over here, yeah? Okay, don't worry, don't worry, right? Even though today we are talking about second issue already, second episode, but if you miss the first episode, you can always go back to the first episode, right? You can view that again from our Facebook page, yeah? So don't worry about that. Wow, Samantha also first-timer. Now, but let me just briefly introduce our firm, yeah? In case this is your very first time knowing me, knowing YYC, yeah? Now, YYC is actually an accounting and advisory firm, right? We were established since 1974, and our our aim, yeah? our aim is to empower entrepreneurial success, right? Is to empower entrepreneurial success. Yeah, so that is our aim. To do that, of course, we need our vision and mission, right? So our vision is to be the number one, right? Number one accounting and advisory firm in Asia, in Asia. And our mission is even more important because we want to inspire everyone so that everyone unleash their potential 
and more importantly, find fulfillment in life. That's a very important mission by YYC. Now, but to do that, right, we always uphold three very important brand promises over here. Yeah, what are the brand promises that we want to promise to give to people out there? The very first is to share our expertise. You see, the reason why we want to do this secrets reveal series, why do we want to let people know the techniques? soft text audit issues. That's because it's one of our brand promises. We want to share our expertise to everyone. Yeah, And if you're our client, you would know that we will give you our most proactive care. Not just normal care, but proactive care. Yeah, Because we want all our clients to have the most positive experience ever. Yeah. So now you may think that YYC is probably just a normal accounting firm, right? like those accounting firms out there. It's not true because a normal accounting firm would provide compliance services like audit service, accounting service, tax service. Yeah, but in YYC, we have more than that because we have our own advisory arm that actually does a lot of different advisory work, such as strategic planning, restructuring, valuation, and even now, you know, people are all into cloud, right? We even help people to do cloud transformation. Yeah, we also have our own business school. That means we hold a lot of seminars, workshops, talk from time to time. We also do global business services. Yeah, that means we serve overseas company like outsource accounting, outsource payroll, etc. Now, if you see any of these services that you think, hey, this one interests me, this one is something that I'm looking at, drop us an email. Remember, drop us an email or send us a private message so that we can contact you and discuss further with you. Yeah, right. So these are the services that we're providing. Okay, now, of course, YYC established since 1974. That means we are 46 years old this year. And we call ourselves an international firm, yeah? Because we have branches not just in Malaysia, also in Singapore right now. We have more than 800 employees, more than 20,000 clients, and we have trained more than 120,000 participants throughout our workshops because we have held more than 5,000 workshops. Now, these are all the awards given to YYC throughout these years, all right? So, now having said that, YYC, of course, have branches in Kuala Lumpur, Johor, and also in Penang. And because we are an international firm right now, we also have a branch in Singapore, right? In Singapore. Wow, okay, I see more people responding to me already. I see Lee Siu Fun coming for the second time. Hi, welcome again, Siu Fun. Ung Chen Ho. Hi, welcome, Chen Ho. Welcome again. And Becky is the very first, very first timer. Wow, okay. We have more than 100 people already. Okay, we have more than 100 people. And I think we want to start our secrets reveal series now okay now but remember feel free to put in any questions at any time right if along the way right when i present when i tell you the secrets right that i am revealing today the technique that i have used that we have used to solve tax audit issues for our client if you've got any questions feel free to put into the comment box so that I can answer to your questions, yeah? Because I want this session to be very interactive. I want to be able to answer to your questions if you have any. So feel free to put in questions at any time and I'll look into the Q&A from time to time, okay? So now, let's go on to today's case and today's issue that is issue number two, episode two on tax audit and investigation issues. And today we are gonna talk about purchases. Yes, today we are going to speak about purchases. Now, why would purchase be an issue? First of all, now if you do business, right, or if you understand a very simple trading business that you would have sales, you would have purchase. So sales is your income, purchase is your expense. That means, that means purchase is an expense that would reduce your profit. And if your profit has been reduced, you should be paying less tax, right? But imagine if the Inland Revenue Board comes in and check on your account during an audit and tells you, sorry, your purchase, even though it's already an expense, but it will not be tax deductible. That means the Inland Revenue Board is telling you that you have paid some money for your purchase, but you can't reduce your tax. You still have to pay a lot of tax even after paying for your purchases. How would you feel? You definitely feel like, hey, this is not right, right? After I've paid money for my purchases, you tell me this is not deductible. Now, go, let's go back to the concept. Why would purchases be deductible? Now, because the general principle of deductibility under the Income Tax Act, yeah, it's according to the subsection 33 sub 1, right? Section 33 of the Income Tax Act 1967 says, if you have incurred certain expenses, 
your expenses will be tax deductible, will be tax deductible if it fulfills these conditions. Now, what are these conditions? It says it must be an outgoing or expense. Well, purchase is definitely an outgoing expense. It must be wholly and exclusively incurred for your business. Well, purchase is definitely for business one. Right? And it says it must be incurred. That means it must be confirmed, incurred, not just an estimate, not just a provision. Well, okay, well, purchases usually it is, right? And it must be during that period. That means your purchase must be incurred during a certain period, right, for, of which you are reporting your tax. So if it's incurred out of that period, you, can, you may probably get deduction only in the other periods, right? Not in that particular period. And this is the most, impo most important thing. All your expenses must be incurred in the production of gross income, right? It must be incurred to produce more income. That means the moment you incur some of that expense, the reason behind why you need to incur that expense is to produce more income, is to generate more income, right? So it must be in the production of gross income. Then only this expense will be deductible. Now, you may tell me, hey, if that's the case, purchases should actually fulfill all these ones. Right? When you purchase something, it is for you to resell, it is to produce income. It's an outgoing, it is definitely for business, and when I purchase something, I get an invoice, it's incurred, it's not estimate, yeah? And it must be incurred during a period. So why would the Inner Realm God comes in and de uh, deny the deduction? Now let me just share this case with you. We have got a case, right? We have got a case here of which the Inner Revenue Board came in check on our client's account and let's look at the background. Yeah. Let's look at the background of our case and why would the Indian Realm Board disallow the purchases? Why would they say this is not deductible? You see, our client is in the business of operating a restaurant. Yes, so our client actually deals with restaurant business. Yeah, and at the same time, our client purchased a lot of goods. Yeah, purchased a lot of goods from a company. Let's call it Company A. Yeah, so these goods were purchased by the restaurant, right, to be used in the restaurant business, right, from the Company A. Okay, and this Company A, coincidentally, belongs to one of the directors in this client's company. Well, that means that uh, our client's company, right, one of the directors in the company, actually own company A, and this company A sells goods to this company of which being audited. Ah, so you, you may somehow think, that, hey, that's some connection over here. Yes, you see, when you purchase something from a related company, from a related company, there is where the Inland Revenue Board will be focusing, will be looking at whether these purchases are real or not real. Yeah, And what is worse, the worst thing here is the cash sales invoice issued by company A to our client is not even under company's A name. Hey, how can this be? Company A is selling things to the client, right? And company A is not using its own cash sales invoice when they issue invoice and sell to company A. So now when this happened, you may probably now think that Okay, that's it, gone, right? Gone case. Because if you don't have an invoice from company A, how can you get deduction? How can you prove that this purchase is actually real? Now, why, first of all, why did company A does that? Why did company A actually issue invoice in not in its own name? Now, why is that so? Because company A has not even printed it's cash sales invoice, yeah? They have got comp computer-generated invoice, but not cash sales invoice, yeah? And company A used leftover cash sales invoice, leftover cash sales invoice from other companies. What? Who are these other companies? These companies are actually uh, companies that have a common director in company A. Well, then it explains. You see, company A wants to issue cash sales invoice, but company A does not have cash sales invoice printed yet. So one of the directors in company A says, oh, I have some other companies which I have leftover invoices, right? Leftover invoices because my companies are dormant right now. We don't use this cash sales invoice anymore. So I'll just take their invoice and I'll just use them to issue cash sales invoice. And of course, they'll just strike off the name and put in company's A name and issue that to the client. So logically, what you would expect here is, yes, the IRB, the Inland Revenue Board would say, no, I suspect these invoices are fictitious. Because you tell me, 
you purchase from company A. You purchase goods from company A, but the invoices do not come from company A. The invoices come from company B, company C, company B, other companies. Yeah. So how can the Indian Revenue Board believe that these purchases by our client are actually real purchases, genuine purchases? So RB says, we think these invoices are fictitious. We don't trust that you have got such purchases and the Indian Revenue Board disallowed the deduction on the purchases from company A. So now our client is in great trouble right now because they have purchased so many things and now the Inland Revenue Board says, even though you have paid, but we think these invoices are fictitious, these purchases are not real, not genuine, and you don't get deduction because of that. So how do we help the client? Now, so the client was in a great trouble right now and came to us and asked us to help them. Right. So how do we do what did we do to help our client to solve this matter? Now we did an analysis. All right. First, we look at we look at what happened. We look at happened. Now this is the issue raised by Ilan Rambert. He says, "Well, you have purchased. You you claim that you purchased from company A. Right? You claim that you purchased from company A. But when we look at your purchases, these purchases uh, are actually from company B, company C, and company D." Right? And all these purchases are under the name of B, C, and D. That means the invoice letterheads are all under B, C, and D. The Indian Revenue Board disallowed the whole thing. So you see, 1.2 million purchases, all disallowed. Right? They say, because you claim this is from A, but you don't have invoices from A. So we did a deeper analysis. Right? We asked the client, look, why did you do so? And of course, the client explained, he said, because company A does not have the cash sales invoice yet. So he has to use some cash sales invoice and they just simply pick, you know, from some dormant companies of which the director is having, right? So the director just takes some cash sales invoice from his other companies, strike off the name, putting company's A name. So we say, all right, we got to prove one thing. We got to prove, got to prove that the cases are genuine. We got the proof that even though the invoices are not from company A, we have the proof that the purchases are genuine. How do we do that? We have to compare. Yeah, we have to compare the sales reported in company A with the purchases reported in the client's account. Yes, that means we need to match. We need to do a matching over here because the client claims that they have purchased from company A. So rightfully, company A would have reported the same sales, right, for whatever goods that this company A have sold to the client. So we need to then prove that these purchases are genuine by comparing with the sales. So what did we do? We went into company A, where we went to company A, and we tell the company A, look, we need you to give us a list, right, a list of sales to our client. Right? We need you to give us a list. right? So we obtained the list and we found that, hey, you know what? Let's say in 2014, yeah, the total sales to our client is this. right? It's 377000 And in our client's account, we have reported 376000 plus another 924, which is actually recorded in another expense account. And if we add these two up, it goes back to 377157. Right. That means uh, that means yeah, the sales reported in company's A account tallies with our client's purchases account, right? Because if you take this three seven seven one five seven and you add it with uh, and you compare it with these two, the total of these two, it tallies. It tallies. So we then tell the Inland Revenue Board, look, look, right? Company A has got this sales right, reported that says company A has sold these to the client, right, to our client. And that total sales is actually the same, right? Because you see, in 2014, our client has claimed the purchases as 376233, which is actually here, right? Which is actually here. And if you add this 924 into this, it actually goes to the total sales reported by company A to our client. So it tallies, it tallies. That means this amount tallies with the sales from company A. Now, and apart from that, apart from that, we also have to show more things. We have to show more things like, well, after the company A has sold this amount, 
to our client. The client has indeed made payment. We show the payment voucher. We show the bank re record, right? The bank transaction record to show that these sales was genuine because there is invoice, there is payment, and of course there's payment voucher to support all the payments made. Now, and because of that, and because of that, we tell the Inland Revenue Board, Company A has now reported the sales in the tax return. They even report this in the tax return. That means Company A has made a genuine sale. And we substantiate that with audited report, tax computation of, audit, uh, of Company A, and also invoices, payment proof, payment voucher, as well as bank statement. So we are able to show to the Inland Revenue Board that everything is genuine because there is a sales report, there is a invoice, there is payment proof like bank statement, payment voucher, and these sales is also reported in Company's A account and of course reported in the tax return and they've paid tax as well. Now, by doing all this, what we have done is we actually managed to prove that the purchases are genuine and these purchases are incurred wholly and exclusively in the production of gross income of our client because the client has indeed made payment so that they have got some goods so that they can sell, right? So that they can sell and these proves that the chases are incurred in the production of gross income. And the matching concept is very important because we are managed, where we manage to show to the Inland Revenue Board that company A has proven right, that the purchases are genuine by reporting its sales in its tax return as well. So because of all that, because of all that, the Inland Revenue Board dropped this issue, right? Dropped this issue and believed that our client has made a genuine sale, right? Has made a genuine sale. And therefore, the client managed to get that 1 million plus purchases gone through and doesn't have to pay additional tax and even penalty. Now, what is our advice to you? Now, after no looking at this issue, what is our advice? Yeah, what is the advice that you have? What's the moral of the story over here that you should take note? Yeah. First, remember, very important, do not ever use fictitious invoice. Please do not ever use fictitious invoice because if you use a fictitious invoice, you will potentially see yourself having trouble, right? Explaining to the Inland Revenue Board and telling the Inland Revenue Board that my purchase is actually genuine. Yeah. And of course, the next thing is please ensure all your purchases are supported with valid invoices. Yeah. That means you must have a valid invoice, not just a piece of white paper, just write something, you know, something people would use that kind of so-called invoice. Do not ever do that. Use a valid proper invoice with the letterhead, with a proper description, with the amount and sign, yeah, unless it's say computer generated and doesn't need signature, right? Make sure it's a proper invoice. And more importantly is make sure you can prove you have made payment, yeah? Make sure that you have you can prove that you have made payment to your creditor, right? Things like official receipt, you know, like bank in sleep, or even uh, some creditor statement, you know, to show that you have made payment. With all these, with all these, you will be able to prove all your purchases are genuine and there will be no problem for you to claim deduction for your purchases, all right? Now, I see there's a question over here, yeah? Now, Jean, Jean E, Jean E is asking, uh, but what if company A didn't report the sales? Very good question, Gene. Yeah, very good question. I would say if you are um, if you manage to get all this, say you have got a proper invoice, right, from a company A, you can prove that you have made payment to company A, right? You can prove that you know this payment has been received by company A with official receipt, then there is no problem, even though company A doesn't report the sales because it's company's A fault. It's company A's fault. But you know what? If in our case, uh, in our case, uh, if you don't have actually proper invoices from company A and you actually only have invoices from other companies or even invoices without company's letterhead, that will be a big trouble. That will be a big trouble for you to prove, especially if company A doesn't report the sales because the company A would then say, oh, no, I have not sold this. I have not sold this to the company. Right? So who is saying the right thing. Even though you can prove that you have made payment, the payment may not necessarily be a purchase, you know. The payment may, may not be necessarily be a purchase. So, when there's no proper invoice, if company A denies that he has actually made the sales to you, yeah, because they didn't report the sales, you are going to be in trouble. See? That's why. Please ensure you have got all this to support your purchases in future. Alright? 
Now, okay, I know more questions are coming in. Keep the questions coming in. Keep the questions coming in. Yeah, I'll answer to all your questions. No worries, right? I'll answer to all your questions whenever you're putting questions in the comment box. But let me just tell you. Now, look, today we have learned another technique. We learned another technique on how to prove purchases, even though the purchases are not in you know, a proper invoice, even though the purchases are in some other company's invoices, we are we were able to actually prove the purchases are genuine and we were able to help the client to drop the issue so that the client save a lot of tax and of course save paying penalty, right? They don't have to pay penalty at all. Yeah. Now, so again, right, if in case you receive any tax audit letter, let's say you have got some tax audit issues, right, faced by you right now, of which you have no idea how to solve my tax audit issue because the Indian Revenue Board is asking me a lot of questions and they say this is not right, that is not right, this is not deductible, that has to be added back and they charge you with a penalty. Please come to us, right, feel free to come to us Put us, uh, give us a message, right? Send us a message on Facebook, right? We can always do a complimentary online consultation for you, right? We can always do a complimentary online cons consultation so that we can help you to solve your tax audit issues with the techniques that we have over here, all right? So feel free to send us a message right onto our Facebook page, either our YYC Advisors Facebook page or my own Facebook page, Tax Guru Zen Chow, right? Send us a message if you have received any tax audit letter so that we can help you to solve your tax audit issue with some techniques over there, okay? So, yes, now we are into the Q&A session. Yes, we are into the Q&A session, and I see more questions are coming in. Now, keep the questions coming in, eh? keep the questions coming in, because I will open this up, right, and I will be answering all your questions, right? I'll be probably un opening this up for the next 10 to 15 minutes for me to answer to all your questions, right? Let me just drink a sip of water, then I'll be answering to your questions. Okay, all right, so uh, let me just put this back to this page maybe. Okay, now I see there's a question here from Tech B. Okay, Tech B say, yeah, I received invoice, but banking details are personal name. Do you think that is okay? Now, Tech B, put it this way. The very, the most important thing here is the invoice validity. The invoice has to be a valid invoice. That means the invoice is a proper one with letterhead, with a proper description, with the amount. Now, of course, you they may ask you to put in the money or to bank in the money into a personal name. Now, that sometimes depends on what the entity is. Because you see, if this invoice comes from a sole proprietorship, right, then most likely uh, this sole proprietor would want you to bank in money into the personal account. But if, if all the banking details are stated clearly on the invoice, then it shouldn't be a problem. It's not a problem because you see, you got a proper invoice and the proper banking details uh, are stated onto the invoice. So you are only making payment to the name account right in the invoice which is a proper invoice so that is not a problem for you that's not an issue at all even if you pay to a personal names account but if you receive an invoice of which uh, the banking details are actually different not a personal name but some, that somehow the the supplier the supplier asks you to make payment into a personal name bank account uh, make sure you get a confirmation make sure you get a confirmation from the uh, uh the supplier's uh, representative or the supplier's uh, a director or so right to say that uh you you may pay make payment into this account so that it shows that it is a supplier that asks you to make payment right into this account so with that then it shouldn't be an issue with you for you, right? Because you have a proper invoice and you have proper instruction to ask you to make payment, right? So make sure you have that in hand, then it shouldn't be an issue for you to get deduction. Okay. Next, I have here from Ong Chen Ho. Okay, Ong Chen have two questions over here. Now, first question here is that um is supporting one year's purchases sufficient to prove for all four YAs? Oh, Chen Ho, I think you probably see that because I only show you one year, right? In fact, we did a, we did four years analysis, right? Of course, I show you only one year. I show you only one year, but we actually did four years analysis. We did all the analysis for all these four years, right? Here, all four years, yeah, right? We do the analysis and we look at the company's A sales, right? For each 
of the year, right? Four years, and we managed to tally all these four years to all these purchases for all four years. And that is how we managed to drop the case. Right? We didn't just use one year and drop the case. I'm only picking up one year for you to see, right? I'm not showing all the four years, but we did analysis for all four years. All right, Chen Ho. Okay, next question that you are asking over here is, what about the cash sales, lacking sales invoice? Will that disqualify the purchases as gross income is not supported? Well, Chen Ho, now when you say cash sales lacking of sales invoice, yeah, uh, does it mean that um, are you looking at the purchases perspective or are you looking at the sales perspective? Now, I'll put it this way. yeah. If you put it at the sales perspective, now as long as you declare it as a sale, it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah? I mean, there's no problem for you to qualify it as a uh, gross income. But, but yeah, if you are saying from the purchases perspective, yeah, when you don't have a cash sa uh, sales invoice, we don't have a sales invoice uh, to prove your purchase, that is where I'm, I was saying it's going to be a problem, right? Because when you don't have a valid purchase invoice, you see, I was saying, right, if you don't have a valid purchase invoice, right, you are going to face issues when the Inland Revenue Board comes and check because they will challenge and say, this, in this purchase may not be genuine. So I do know sometimes uh, you may say, hey, you know what, this supplier who sells me things with cash, they can't even produce me any invoice. What can I do? Uh, you may probably ask me this question. Yeah, what can I do when they can't even give me a proper invoice? You create a purchase order. Now, this is one more tips that I want to give all of you. Yeah. If you cannot get a sale invoice from your supplier, you do a purchase order. You do a purchase order from on your own and state down what are the goods that you are purchasing from this supplier. Get the supplier to sign on your purchase order. And of course, thereafter, this becomes somehow like an invoice, like a purchase invoice for you already. Then you can just make payment accordingly and everything will be in proper order for you to claim tax deduction. All right. Okay, next I have here from Te Jackie. Te Jackie say, how about if we receive Chinese word purchase invoice? Example, we purchase from China supplier. That invoice don't have invoice wording. <laughs> My boss is doing online business. Okay, Te Jackie, very good question over here. Yeah, very good question over here. I do know some of you may receive invoices in foreign language. Now, things like, as some of you may probably purchase from uh, uh, France, right? Getting some French invoice, purchasing from Germany, gets, getting some German invoice. And of course, if you buy from China, you get some Chinese invoice, yeah. Now, what I would recommend you to do here is, if you get this Chinese invoice or any other foreign language invoice, yeah, you... Uh, translate it on your own first. Now, you can still use this invoice even though it is in Chinese. You translate it on your own by just putting in what are the things that you have purchased. Put in in English or in Malay. Now, you know why? Because in Malaysia, in Malaysia, right, the law says, yeah, for an invoice to be a valid invoice, it has to be in either English or Bahasa Malaysia. Right? It has to be either in English or or Bahasa Malaysia, right? Even though Chinese, Tamil, Indian, you know, those languages are not acceptable as a valid invoice. So if you receive the Chinese wordings, you translate it on your own first. It's okay. Just put down in English or in Malay, what are you purchasing? What are you purchasing? And thereafter, support it with other things like your payment proof. Again, right? Because you are buying it from Chinese supplier, you have to make payment. Make sure you make payment to the Chinese supplier whether it's telegraphic transfer or, or any other methods, yeah? you make sure you have payment proof, right? Your receipt, yeah, your banging sleep, your telegraphic transfer uh, sleep. If that is in, uh, in proper order, no worries, you will be able to get deduction for that. You will be able to get deduction, yeah? right? But please make sure, don't just go and pay someone and say, oh, that, that, that supplier came to Malaysia and I just pay him cash. You know, if you really need to do that, which is a bit risky, and make sure that he also signs on all your payment voucher, right? To make sure that he receives such payment, right? So I, I would definitely prefer if you can do telegraphic transfer, pay by credit card, you know, so that you have proof of payment to be shown to the authority. Okay, hey Jackie, I hope I've answered to you, yeah? Okay, Carrie, Carrie Lim here has got a question saying that if China supplier using the company A issue commercial invoice, but asks us to pay company B, 
and all the shipment transaction will go through shipping company. Now, carry. so this is what I was saying, you see, sometimes here, yeah, sometimes here, yeah, a supplier may issue you an invoice, right, issue an invoice yeah, with their own proper letterhead, but then ask you to make payment to another company. That, that happens, I know, that happens, right? So what you need to get over here is a proper documented uh, instruction from company A. That means company A gives you the invoice and company A continues asking you to make payment to a certain account, right? To a certain account. With that in a uh, proper documentation, you can then prove to the authority, to the Indian Revenue Board especially here, uh, that look, I have got a proper invoice and I have made a proper payment, but the payment is not made to the uh, Indian Revenue, uh, to the company A because of the instruction from company A. So you got to show the instruction from company A to tell you to make payment to another company. So if you have that, not an issue for you to claim deduction because this is definitely a genuine purchase already. Yeah, Harry, I hope I've answered to your question, yeah? All right, I have got another question here. Uh, this is a question from, let's see. Uh, okay, yep. This is uh, oh, someone sent WhatsApp question to one of my colleagues. Yeah? So one of my colleagues uh, via WhatsApp. Yeah? But, but feel, you know what? Put your questions into Facebook. You know why? Because if you send a WhatsApp uh, question over uh, to my colleague, then you know this question is not shared amongst all these uh, Facebook viewers right now. So they don't know what question, what this is this question. Yeah? But anyway, anyway, right? I've got the question over here. So let me just read out the question. Yeah? The question is like this. You say, if customer A issues PO, payment order, a payment, a purchase order, sorry, PO, purchase order to us, but payment is made by another party. Will there be another, uh, any problem? Don't worry, no problem. Because you see, when it comes to customer issuing PO to you, you are doing sales, right? You're doing sales, right? Who, no matter who makes payment to you, right? If, even though someone from another party makes payment to you, as long as you, you declare the sales, not an issue at all, right? Because you receive payment and you declare the sales. So that is all right, right? That is all right. So no worries about that, yeah? Okay, another question here is from Ahien. Ahien says, record keeping is five years or seven years? Well, Ahien, you probably have heard this from someone telling you five years, is it? <laughs> now, let me just tell you, uh, record keeping is still seven years. It's still seven years. Uh. Now, you probably got misunderstood or confused with the five years rule. You probably have heard someone tell you about five years, right? Five years is not about record keeping. Record keeping still stays with seven years, right? You still have to keep your record for seven years. Five years rule is on tax audit. That means, that means if the Indian Revenue Board wants to check on your account, if they want to audit on your tax computation, your tax return form, they can only go five years backwards from the last tax return that you have submitted. So assuming if you have already submitted, uh, say you have submitted your 2019, right? 2019 is a tax return. So they can go five years backwards. That means they can go back to 19, 18, 17, 16, and 15, right? They can go up to 15, right? 2015. So the five years rule is how many years the Indian Revenue Board can go backwards to audit on your account, right? Not keeping record for five years, yeah? Record keeping is still seven years, right? That's according to the law, yeah? That's according to the Income Tax Act, yeah? But remember, even though I say Indian Revenue Board IRB can only go five years backwards to check on your account, but when it comes to investigation, if it's an investigation case, there is no limit, yeah? There's no limit, yeah? Because when it comes to investigation case, the IRB would have got some evidence to suspect that you have evaded tax. If they have suspected that, they can go unlimited years. They can go unlimited years to check on your account. But still, your record keeping is seven years, right? It's seven years, okay? So I hope I've cleared your confusion, Ahian, all right? So record keeping, seven years, right? Seven years, all right. Do we have any other questions? Do we have any other questions? Yep, we have another few more minutes before I I, 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 I end this uh, Facebook Live because we always have our Facebook Live for about 40 to 45 minutes, right? Just a short one, all right, every week. So, of course, this week, we're gonna, we talked about purchases. Let me remind you, we talked about purchases. Last week, if you remember, we talked about interest restriction, yeah? If you have missed our last session, Feel free to go to our Facebook page, right? Either YYC Advisors or Tax Guru Zen Chow, yeah? You can go to my Facebook page and you will see that Facebook Live session that I had, right, last week 
on interest restriction issue yeah so every week we will bring in different different issues right every week we're going to bring in different tax audit issues and we tell you how did we help our client to solve tax audit issues right by using certain techniques right which is going to be very useful for you if you actually face a tax audit from the Illinois Revenue Board, all right? But of course, if you receive any tax audit letter, please, of course, we can give you a complimentary online consultation because we want to help you to solve your tax audit issue as well, okay? Okay, I've got another question over here, all right? Oh, thanks, Harry, right? Thanks for saying thanks, all right? Celine, Celine says, uh, can we pay to an individual who didn't register under SSM as purchases, right? Uh, like, say, payment voucher only attached with IBG transfer seat. Now, Celine, you can, you can. Yeah, I do know sometimes uh, small suppliers like sole proprietors, you know, or even an individual supplier, they may probably be supplying something to you, right? And they are not registered under SSM. So they don't have a, a business name, right? So they, therefore, they don't have proper invoice. So this is the instances where I was saying, if they can't give you a proper invoice for the sales, you do a purchase order. You do a purchase order from your own and state who are you buying from, what are the things, what are the goods that you're buying from, what is the amount and get the individual to sign on it. And of course, payment made, I would uh, encourage you to do a uh, bank transfer like what you said, IBG, yeah, right? If you do bank transfer into that individual's account, right, in the, into that individual's name account, right, no issue at all already because you have got a purchase order to substantiate your purchase, even though without a, an invoice from the supplier, and you have proven that this is genuine because you have made payment into his or her account, okay? So you can use the purchase order method, right, to do a reverse invoice, or we call it like something like a reverse invoice, okay? So hope I've answered to you, Salim. Okay, now we have probably just uh, have another one to two more minutes. If you have got any questions, put it into the comment box, right? Of course, if you have no more questions, I thank all of you today. I thank all of you today for joining us for 40 over minutes already. And I hope today you have learned another technique on another issue, another tax audit issue. And remember, follow our Facebook page, follow our YYC Advisors and my own Facebook page, Tax Guru Zen Chow, so that I can give you more updates and you will be notified when we have another session that I will reveal more secrets, right? More secrets to you on techniques to solve tax audit issues. Because every week, we are going to bring in more issues for you to learn more. All right. So I see there's no more questions coming in already. Hey, that's one more. That's one more. Okay. I have one question here from Yusanisma. All right. Yusanisma say, how to treat sample item purchased by director? No invoice provided as the item buy from China, which the supplier didn't issue invoice to my director. Now, you saw this, Ma. Now, when you say you have not got any invoice, you probably would have certain other documents, right? Because when you buy something from China, right, even though I, I know you probably buy from Taobao, right, you probably would have some other documents to show that what have you purchased, how much is the cost, and payment record as well. So use all these, use all these to substantiate your purchase, right? Because if you don't have all these, uh, it's very difficult to prove to the Inland Revenue Board that you have got a genuine purchase, yeah? So use all these to prove these purchases are genuine, yeah? I know sometimes you don't get an invoice, but any other documents, even though just an email confirmation to say that you have successfully ordered this, you know, with the invoice, uh, with the uh, payment, right, uh, with the cost, and if you have a payment record together, that shouldn't be an issue for you anymore, right? You send this one. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome, Celine and Richard. Yes, you're welcome. Thanks for joining me again. Yeah, hope to see you again next week. Yeah, for the third time. Huh? So stay tuned with us. Follow our Facebook page for the next episode of Secrets Reveal Techniques to Solve Tax Audit Issues. Yeah, and remember, if you've got if you receive any tax audit letter, feel free to come to us so that we can give you a complimentary online consultation because our aim here is to help you solve tax audit issues so that you can save more tax and don't pay penalty for that. All right. So I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much for your time, for joining us and hope you have a great weekend ahead. Yeah, I know it's Friday already. Hope you have a great weekend ahead and I'll see you again next time in our next episode of Secrets Revealed. All right. See you then. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Have a nice weekend.
然的。可以。